Okay, good morning. Still morning, one more minute. <laughs> well, I hope you are enjoying this session uh, so far. Uh, must be nerve wracking as a new grad student. So hopefully, uh, my talk will help you along the way how to be successful as a grad student. Uh, and hopefully, everybody will graduate. Can't guarantee that, but it anyway, that's what I was asked to talk to you about is how to be a successful grad student. So the three things that you need to know, um, one is academic issues, uh, another one is non-academic issues, and the third one, which is a very important thing, is uh, supervisor-student relationship, how well you get along with your supervisor, okay? So I'll just quickly run through some of these points. First one is, of course, don't fail. <laughs> I mean, it seems silly, maybe, but uh, it's obvious. Don't fail. Now, in case you don't know, the passing grade for grad courses is 65%, not 50%. A lot of people don't know that, okay? Another thing is that if you are asked to do an undergrad course as part of your grad program, the passing grade is 65%, not 50%. So you may fail in that course, and then your classmates who are undergrad students who got uh, 64, they pass, you fail, right? They got 51, they pass, or 50, they pass. But you got 64 and you fail, right? So be very careful of that. Make sure you know the rules. The other thing that you need to know is that uh, if you're given a baseline funding from School of Grad Studies, you have to maintain a 75% average every term. Otherwise, that money is taken away from you, okay? So don't say, I don't know that, eh? now you know. Because SGS will check every term to make sure that you have your 75% average. Another question that you have to ask yourself before you take your courses is that, do you have sufficient background? Now, uh, well, undergrad courses are quite different from grad courses, as you know, or maybe you don't know yet. Uh, grad courses tend to be definitely more intense, a lot more is expected of you, and you may not be used to the teaching, the style of the assignments or term papers or whatever. So sometimes you may need to build up your background before you actually take the grad course. So you have to ask yourself that, are you ready to take the grad course? I know you're all grad students, but sometimes some grad courses require a little bit of background, right? For example, you may be asked to take a, a grad course in uh, statistics or something, eh? But you may not have, or the last time you took a stats course might be 10 years ago. Now, maybe you need to really brush up. You might have to take a course, you might have to really brush up on your own, right? So you have to find that out yourself, of course. Nobody knows what you know, right? Now, if you don't have the right background, well, you need to seek extra help, of course. Right? You might have to take an undergrad course, and you might even have to drop the course. You have to tell your supervisor, well, I have to drop the course because if you carry on, you're going to fail. So you have to, again, like I said, you have to look after yourself. How many courses do you need? Well, that's again, depends very much on your program. It depends on your supervisor, and courses may range from two courses minimum of two courses at the PhD level to a maximum of, well, there's no maximum actually. Your supervisor tells you that you need 10 courses and as well, that's it, you take 10 courses, right? <laughs> so, so you need to know, right, what is going to be expected of you, which means that you really need to pace yourself. Now, some people are very ambitious because they say, oh, I'm used to taking, well, the engineering students especially, oh, I'm used to taking seven courses in the undergrad program. So taking five courses at the grad level is no big deal, right? Two less. You'd be, you'd be very sorry. <coughs> One grad course normally is equivalent to two or three undergrad courses. I mean, in terms of time, in terms of uh, the workload, and sometimes just the level of difficulty. So you have to be very careful. Don't be too ambitious. I know you want to finish your program as soon as you can, but doesn't mean that you need to take too many courses in one go, right? I mean, it's worse if, if you fail. 
So pace yourself. <coughs> I would say two to three is uh, definitely more than enough in the first term. Unless you are a genius, okay? <laughs> then you can take as many as you want. Now, the other thing is have a study plan. <coughs> that means time management is critical. You need to know when you study what, right? I mean, it sounds like a simple thing. I mean, you have done your undergrad. You probably know how to do a study plan, but it's very important to do a study plan at the grad level because there's so, there so many things that you need to do, right? Although there are only two courses that you're taking, but you'd be surprised at the amount of, of work that you need to do. Now, if you have problems doing a study plan or you have never done one before and uh, you need help, well, find somebody who can help you. If you still can't find anybody, come and see me. I have a foolproof method that I've been using since grade seven <laughs> when I was that little. So, so, <coughs> um, so these are the things that these are the few things that you need to know before you even start your program, right? You know, these are just background information. Another thing is get to know the regulations and policies. How many of you actually read the calendar? Hardly any hands up, right? One, two maybe, two, three. Out of 300 of you, three only, right? So you need to read the calendar that is pertinent to your program. You need to know when is the start of the semester and when the add and drop deadlines are. When can you add a course? Or what's the deadline for adding a course, right? So you have about, I think, two, three weeks to decide on a course. And when you can drop the course. For a lot of you who are coming from away, uh, you, it might sound really strange that you can allow to drop a course. What do you mean by that? You know, Maybe in the undergrad program, there's no such thing as dropping a course, right? I know when I did my undergrad in, uh, in England, there's no such thing as dropping a course. You just do everything you're told to do. You can't drop any course. But in, well, I guess at one and many other Canadian universities, you're allowed to drop a course. So two, three weeks in, you might say, well, this course is not for me or well, it's too tough or too easy, and you can drop the course, no penalties. But you need to know when that is, right? Because you have to fill in the right forms. You might have to do it online or you have to fill in the form. So the other thing you need to know is uh, when is the end of the semester? When is the exam period? Again, from experience, a lot of students start booking their tickets you know, to go home for Christmas or whatever, right during exam. Now, there's no way the university is going to change the exam date for you, right? Just because you have booked a ticket to go on a holiday. So, check the calendar, make sure you know when you can leave the campus, right? What if you fail a course? I know you don't want to hear about failing, right? You're new to the program, you don't want to fail. But this happens. What if you fail a course? Well, of course you will cry or something like that. <laughs> but uh, you need to know how to, uh, well, I mean, if you have grounds for appeal, you need to know how, how to do that. Again, all this are in the calendar, all right? You need, the, how, you need to know the appeal process. You need to know what are the valid reasons for appeal. For example, you need a medical note to say you're really sick or your you know, loved ones has died or whatever, right? So you, if your third uncle has died, that doesn't count. <laughs> if your dog has died, it doesn't count. So I know when my dog died, I really cried, eh? but that is not a valid excuse, apparently. <laughs> so it has to be the right person dying, OK? <coughs> and where to get help? The GSU, uh, they, they provide help with your appeal process, if you are not sure. You need to go and find somebody who knows the process, how, to, how, how the process works. But the main thing is read the calendar first, so that you know, you know where to write the right letter to and what, what reasons you can give and that kind of stuff. Right? 
And you need to know that there are two levels of appeal. And if you fail one level, you can go on to the next level, etc. Now, a lot of students, again, have no clue how it works, right? So, again, read, read the calendar. Next thing that is very important as well is academic misconduct. Don't commit academic misconduct. Again, some of these things you might say, well, that's obvious, but it's not that obvious. Again, um, sometimes there's a gray area, you know. To you, it may not be academic misconduct, but to your prof, it may be. And they might charge you for misconduct, right? So you need to know your rights. You need to know what is the meaning of plagiarism, for example, right? Eh? You may have never heard of this word before until now. So these things you need to know. I mean, I encountered from experience after 26 years here, there are many, many students, actually there are many PhD students, master's students who fail because one of the examiners charged them with plagiarism. You know? So these things happen many, many times. Has, has, has happened many, many times. So be very careful. You also need to know your rights, right? I mean, sometimes uh, the, uh, the instructor or the examiner might be wrong, right? So you need to know how to defend yourself. So ignorance of the law is no defense, right? We know that. Maybe you don't know. <coughs> it's like, uh, you know, you kill somebody and you're charged with a crime, obviously, and you say, I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know I can't kill him. Well, obviously, that's no defense, right? So same thing, same thing here. You can't say, oh, I didn't know that. Well, if you're guilty, you're guilty, that's it. So it's your responsibility to know all the regulations, right? You cannot say, oh, I didn't know the regulation, just because you didn't read the calendar. So today, when you go home today, before class starts, read the calendar. That's your homework, right? Make sure that you know all the rules, the deadlines. Any questions? No? Okay. Non-academic issues. Sometimes these are even more important than academic issues. Do you have enough money to live on? I guess most of you uh, are either self-funded, some of you. Uh, some of you got a funding package from your supervisor, combination of supervisor, school of S, uh, grad studies, etc., scholarships. But the question is, do you actually have enough money to live on? Don't underestimate the cost of living in St. John's. <coughs> Don't forget there's a 13% tax on top of whatever you buy. So again, like I said, for the newcomers to uh, Canada, there's this tax, right? GST or HST or something like that. You go to a shop, you see something a hundred bucks, you say, yeah, I can afford that. But then when you go to the counter, pay for it, it's 113 bucks. So what happened? Well, there's 13% tax. It's not listed in the price tag. So all this little thing adds up, you know. So make sure you, uh, you know how much you're gonna spend per week or per month you have enough money to pay the rent, enough money to feed yourself, etc. Right? Don't spend beyond your means, obvious. Use credit wisely. Well, Canadian banks love to give you a credit card because they want you to spend your money, right? Money that you don't have so that you can owe them big bucks. So be very careful. If you're offered a credit card, don't jump for joy yet, right? If you have credit problem, make sure you find help. There's credit counseling, or you talk to your supervisor, talk to your graduate officer, usually they can't help you. Or school of grad studies, they probably can't help you either. <laughs> if it is self-inflicted, right? Now, you may have to work part-time. I know a lot of grad students, after finding that they, can't, they don't have enough money to live by, they would have to work part-time. So 
These are serious questions you have to ask yourself. Okay? Physical and mental health, another important thing. If you're sick, see a doctor. Even if you're a little bit sick, see a doctor. You know why? Get a medical note. You need that later if you fail. <laughs> Honest truth, this is, a lot of people say, oh, I was really sick. Did you see a doctor? No. Why? Oh, I didn't think that I need uh, to see the doctor. Do you have any proof that you were sick? No. My friend knew I was sick. Yeah, but he's not a doctor. So, doctor of engineering is useless, right? He can't write you a note. So, <laughs> so you have to see a doctor. There's medical, there's a clinic here. See a doctor, get a medical note, at least get it documented that you were sick, you went to see the doctor, and whatever he or she prescribed, or whatever, you know. So, you need that in your appeals letter. Without a medical note for your appeal, it's very tough to, <laughs> to get the appeal, I tell you. <coughs> Eat well. I know, again, it's like obvious thing, but it's so easy, right, to eat only junk food when you're a grad student. Because, you, you know, grad students are lazy generally. I mean, in terms of cooking and things like that, it takes up time, you know. No time to cook, so you just go and buy the cheapest thing you can find and, you know, eat ha pizza every day, hamburger every day, right? So you have to be very careful with your, with your diet. Eat well, exercise, stay fit, make friends. This is very important. It's very important that you have friends, right? Join a club, play in team sports. Now, I mean, some of you might say, oh yeah, I'm in sports, but I like to go to the gym and uh, lift weights and things like that, right? That is not a team sports, right? You will never meet people lifting weights. I'm not talking about you, George, Andrew. <coughs> Join in the team activity, right? Play volleyball, or play badminton, or something like that, right? Because the more friends you have, it's, it's better for stress relief. You have friends who, uh, who have common interests, things like that. It makes it much easier to be a grad student. Work hard, play hard, sleep lots, right? Make sure you have good sleep. Sleep a lot, I mean, not in class. But, you know, you should have good sleep, good night's sleep. Another thing is very important is maintain good relationship with your family. Again, I've seen many, many cases where it's break up in marriages, you know, a problem with family and all kinds of stuff, right? So, I know grad study is important, but I would say it's even more stressful if you have a relationship breakup or something. So, you have to maintain good relationship with your family. If you are coming from a foreign country, call home once a week, right? Talk to your mama. I'm sure she is concerned for you, right? Talk to your parents, talk to your family, right? You have a boyfriend, girlfriend, call them twice a week. <laughs> Now, another thing that is important is uh, to take personal time off. When I was a student, I always take Friday night off. Friday night, that's it, I don't do anything. Go to the movies, enjoy myself, right? So if you plan that, you don't feel guilty at all because it's planned, okay? Read a book, travel, go out for, to a movie or something. Spend time with loved ones, right? Now, Newfoundland, for, for those who are first time to Newfoundland, I mean, Newfoundland is a beautiful province. Lots of things to see, beautiful scenery. Uh, I would, uh, you know, spend a weekend traveling somewhere, somewhere you've never been, small towns. If you have a bit more time, travel to more exotic places like uh, Fogo Island. <laughs> so Sally is from Fogo Island. Fogo is uh, one of the four corners of the earth. That's, that's, a, that's a fact, okay? You can look it up. 
Uh, so, so it's a beautiful place. I'm sure Sally will be willing to host you there. <laughs> <coughs> so there are lots of places to see in St. John's. Uh, you know, take a tour, travel around. <coughs> There's no air pollution in, in Newfoundland, as you know. Now, personal issues. This is another problem that I see, uh, in fact, a lot among new students, grad students. You have to maintain self-discipline, right? There's a lot of attempt temptation here. Well. A lot of you, uh, I mean, some of you probably come from countries that are pretty restrictive, right? But once you're here, everything is available. So you have to avoid temptations like online gaming and gambling and online shopping and that kind of stuff, right? It can take a lot of time away from you. <coughs> so you have to watch yourself. If you have problems, you have to deal with it right away. Like I said, have a friend, talk to your friend, seek counseling, we have the counseling center, I'm sure you have saw the booth downstairs. Uh, talk to an advisor, the International Student Advising Office probably, graduate officer, or whoever can help you, right? Don't let it fester because this is one, because again, if you fail, and it's because you spend all the time online doing something else, it's very hard to use that as an excuse, right? For your appeal, okay? <coughs> ah, this is, this is even more important. How you, re how you uh, get along with your supervisor is important. So generally a supervisor provides financial support, normally. Right? Provide advice on causes. Provide guidance on your research. And some supervisor will even help you with your career. <coughs> right? They even uh, introduce you to companies and find new jobs and uh, look through your resume and uh, be your reference and that kind of stuff. So they mentor you quite a bit, right? Because they want you to be like them eh, in future, to take over their. their their job kind of thing in future, of course, not right now. <laughs> so generally, most supervisors are nice people. I said most, right? <laughs> but there are some who are, I wouldn't, well, there's a word I want to use, but I think I shouldn't since I'm on TV. <laughs> but there are some supervisors who are not that nice, okay? So you need to know what kind of supervisors you have. So a good relationship with your supervisor is very, very important. Again, like I said, not all student supervisor relationships are rosy, right? I mean, most of them are good. Uh, some supervisors expect too much too soon, right? They want you to do, finish all your courses in the first term. They may ask you to take four courses, okay? And some may say, well, after this term, I want you to write a journal paper, okay? That is really demanding, right? Uh, some may be very difficult to deal with. Some, you have to make an appointment to see them, you know? You can just cut out on the door. You have to make an appointment, and then they will say, come and see me two weeks later. I've, I've encountered all these kind of supervisors. Some wants to control your every move. That's true. They'll say, I want to see you here at 8 o'clock every morning. And I want you to see you on Saturday, right? There's no such thing as a holiday for you. You're a grad student. <coughs> You're my slave, you know. <laughs> they won't say that out loud, but that is what they mean usually, okay? So, so you might be d depressed because of that, eh? So it can happen. I've seen that happen before. So there might be an expectation conflict. Right? What you expect from the supervisor is not what I expect from you as well. So some supervisor would want a, a progress report every week, right? A written progress report. And some wants a presentation from you every week. 
There are some that say, well, see me whenever you want. Uh, see me when you have a question. Or see me when you've done something useful. So there's quite a big difference uh, between supervisors. Sometimes it depends on how they were supervised at one time, right? My supervisor, well, long time ago, 20, 30 years ago, uh, well, his style is, oh, see me whenever you want, and <coughs> you have a question, ask any time you want, right? So I'm left on my own kind of thing. So I tend to do that with my own students. Easy going, right? Uh, but there are some who are really tough on your students. They even want to know what you eat for breakfast or what you eat for lunch. You know. <coughs> so you need to find out before you uh, start your program, or maybe you've already started, what kind of style your supervisor has, right? So that you don't have this expectation difference, difference in expectation. This is a very common situation as well. Sometimes, as associate dean, I get complaints from the supervisor. Oh, this guy is not doing anything, you know, not producing anything. But the students would tell me and said, well, my supervisors say, go and see him or her only when I need to. So I never go and see her because I don't need, to, I don't need his help, right? So, well, it's an uh, expectation difference. Until they get together and say, okay, I want you to do this every two weeks. I want you to submit your report every two weeks or whatever. And the students say, oh, why didn't you tell me earlier, right? So, so you need to have that conversation with your supervisor. What, do you ex what, what, what does he expect from you or she expect from you, okay? <coughs> Otherwise, what he or she writes in the progress report might be quite different from what you think, what you expect, okay? The other question you have to ask yourself, which I put in bold here, is am I easy to deal with, right? Some grad students, you may be one of them, the grad students are one of tough to deal with, right? They think they know it all, right? And they don't want to listen to advice. So you have to ask yourself, are you one of those, right? I know it's tough to answer that question. But, well, grad students are also humans, right? So sometimes it's the grad students' fault that they are difficult to deal with. That there's a breakdown in the relationship because of the grad student, not the supervisor, okay? Now, where to find additional help? <coughs> now, normally, the first person you should talk to would be your supervisor, right? Unless you have a conflict with your supervisor. Then the next person you talk to would be your graduate officer. Now, uh, I guess, Every faculty here has a graduate officer or something. In engineering, I am the associate dean and I'm also the grad officer. So if you are engineering, stu grad student, you have to come and see me. But in uh, departmentalized uh, faculty, you might have to see the department's graduate officer, okay? See whether they can help resolve the conflict. If not, you might have to move on to the next level, to the School of Grad Studies. And I would say the first person to talk to would be uh, Andrew, Andrew Kim. That's the guy sitting right there. You want to stand up? No, so he said not really. So he knows everything. So go and see him, then he will direct you to the right person. If you have money issues, you might have talked to Mr. Lawler, manager of fellowship at the School of Grad Studies. And then, if not, then you go to see the associate dean, Dr. Murin. And finally, hope it never happens, you need to go and see Dr. Goffman, right? Now, the other people that you can uh, talk to uh, is uh, the Grad Student Union. Joey is here, president. And he might send you to somebody else in his team. Or if you're an international student, you have to go and see ISA office. Again, they might send you somewhere else, right? The counseling center or whatever. It depends on the problem. 
So you need to know where to find help. The worst thing is you just sit at home alone and then you don't want to see anybody, you don't want to talk to anybody, and then you go crazy, right? So you need to know, you need to know the rules, you need to know where to find help, and then other, th other than that, there's nothing else you need to know. You have a great time here.